guys and welcome back to the Isle of Wight. I hope you're all well and you've had a fantastic summer. I certainly have. I'm back now though, I'm back building. Have been for a week or so now, so I wanted to get this video out this weekend. Even though you may hear in my voice, I am suffering a little bit with the flu, but that doesn't stop me from putting together a video. So here we are. We are back. Summer is pretty much over now, certainly in the UK. And um, we're back into the series. So last time round, we worked on this beautiful, beautiful building, the Osborne House, created by the one and only Mac Welshman. And this project in general was very different to what I've done before. We've not really had the opportunity as of yet in the Isle of Wight, and certainly not in Monaco, to work on a beautiful, well, stately home, I guess, um, with fantastic gardens and greenery all around. So this was a very different type of build and it really pushed my level of detail into the extreme because look at this, look how well detailed and created this model is. I really had to push and up my game to make it look as good as the actual model itself and I think I done okay. It's one of those projects that you always look back on and think, oh, we could add a few little bits here and there, but in general, I think it worked out quite nicely. But today we're going to work on something that I've never done before and we're going to work on the Ride Pier. Now if you are a resident of the Isle of Wight or you have visited, this pier is very unusual. And what I mean by that is it's a pier that has a station at the very end. So that's what we're going to work on today. We're going to work on this station, pier station, whatever you want to class it as. And um, yeah, it's a very unique build and I was really excited to work on this because I wanted to do as best I could in terms of getting the actual, well the whole construction to be functional as well, not just aesthetical, I wanted to make sure this actually did what it does in real life. Now if you recall as well, before the summer kicked off I did say that I was going to the Isle of Wight for a bit of research stroke holiday and I did do that, unfortunately I was hoping to do a bit of a, a V blog, whatever you want to class it as these days, but unfortunately the weather wasn't the greatest and there wasn't a lot of opportunity to do so. I was there with my um, with my family, so unfortunately this time around there wasn't a enough footage to bring to you a episode of the Isle of Wight research. However, I do plan to do this a bit later on. As the project develops, I do want to head back over to the Isle of Wight, whether it's later on this year or back in next year in the summertime, I do want to do that. But me and Bailey had a fantastic time there. We um, visited a few places over there, which was fantastic for research, but also fantastic to um, relive some of the childhood locations that I visited in the past. Um, we went over to the uh, Model Village area as well, which is something that always always does bring my mind to place. It's Model Villages are very much similar to what we do in this game, if you think about it. We're creating very small recreations of our imagination or recreations of places we've been to. And effectively, City Skylines is a Model Village stroke simulator in my head anyway i'm not saying this is what it's been designed for but you know it's that sort of feeling and when you go around these model villages especially the one in god's hill it's fantastic to have a look at the detail that people put into these as well and it's actually something i thought about myself um my late grandfather he used to build model villages in his garden he used to build the houses and set up little sceneries and it's something that i've always wanted to have a go at and um I'd be interested to hear your thoughts. I mean, it seems quite relatable to have something like that on the channel. It obviously won't be a weekly thing, maybe something once every month or two that perhaps I can work on and then show you the time lapse of it being built up and talk for it. But if that's of interest to you guys, please let me know because I'll be very interested to see if that's something that I could share with people on this channel as well. But anyway, that's the introduction out of the way. Let's get back into this build. So. You'll notice what I did first is I placed down the pier, um, the roots in. So basically one side is for cars and people, which is a wooden platformy bridge, pier, whatever you want to class it as. And then the second one is the actual railway tracks. They do both run parallel to each other. And then the station here 
obviously we've had to terrain some actual ground in here so the um, station itself will be functional and now we're just tying up the edges here I decided to use Ronix's um, docking materials here the assets which work really nice in this particular build because it gives that sense of it is a pier if we use the, the um, keys themselves it didn't quite look as it should do it looked more like a block of concrete out in the ocean this gives a more a better representation of what we're building here so we've gone with that and we've just made it easy by pasting these around um, the issue when you do the terraforming out in the sea is you can never get the material the actual terraforming perfectly so what we're using here we're using the uh, the network um, terraforming network asset from the workshop and basically forcing the land away from the actual side so despite we are losing some of the actual terrain that we can work with on the actual pier itself we are making it look better and we can work around that that's not a problem at all next up we are using the famous procedure objects here and I've taken this item from the workshop I forget what it was called I think it's some sort of um, telegraph material structure I'm not too sure what it was exactly but we've basically flipped it on its side and we're using this as the uh, the sort of construction that holds up the pier itself um, and adding in some of the footings as well which look much better than the standard ones um, so this here was actually quite quite enjoyable to do despite it being quite tricky with a PO but nicely enough these actually fitted in quite nicely it's almost like it's a bit of Lego putting this bit together um, the way they slotted in was really really quite nice and I had to get the angles right to follow the angle of the road that we've got already built on the pier so it did take a bit of time moving it around I had to kind of adjust it up and down and also adjust the actual angle of it and then copy and pasting it across all the way over to the other side of the pier so that in place looked made things look more realistic in my opinion we could have not done this uh, but then there was a big gap in between and the actual pier itself I'll get a picture up on the screen for you it is exactly as it looks here so I wanted to try and carry that on and make it look as close as possible to the actual ride pier and now we're using some more of these um, dock assets these are the, the fences which work perfectly they are such a great design and the fact that they are networkable means that they're a lot easier to put into place as well some of the tighter angles we had to kind of use them singly and then use move it to put them next to each other to look and feel a bit more realistic the angle ones didn't quite work so well but all in all this was a great way and again we're not using any props here so this is perfect for this part of the build So the next step was to pick some suitable buildings. Now, I always find this difficult when there's not the right building on the workshop or one that replicates exactly what you want. So I try to be clever here. I try to use a combination of buildings and trying to put them together to make them look a bit more realistic. And also I wanted these to be a functional buildings to draw people to this area. So we got some commercial buildings down. We've obviously got the Costa as well, which will attract people and it was just a case of clipping it together as best as I could um, it's not like for like in terms of what is actually here in real life Isle of Wight but I think it worked out quite nicely and these are the situations you've got to work with I mean I'm not building this one-to-one -one scale we're just using certain areas to recreate as best we can and um, I decided to use these platform props one because I needed to sort of cover up this area here a little bit better um, the actual 
um, platform itself needed to get from one side to the other of this area and it, the tracks themselves didn't allow it. I didn't want to have an overhead bridge, it was a bit silly for the small size so we use these to just adapt and increase the um, platform itself. And just add some stairs. Obviously, these won't technically work in terms of when people do get on the plane, uh, the plane, the train. Even um, people will just go up the little lift that there is on here as well, which is fine. It still still works out okay. And we're using these gates and fences here just to make the platform look a little bit more realistic. Ideally, it should have all been on the same level, but um, I thought this looked quite nice, and it it works. It works for me anyway. So that was that. The next thing we wanted to work on here is some sort of hiding, well basically we wanted to hide this corner here. So I've put down more bumpers and I was trying to find a way of hiding the original bumpers of the track here. And the best way I could think of doing it was adding a sort of little outhouse. Perhaps it's where the um, electrical aspects of a train station are. Um, so we put that in there. Obviously it's a bit of an unusual shape and area to fulfill um, but I think it worked out okay in the end um, we added a few of these electric boxes as well just to sort of add to the the whole um, scenario of what this actually is trying to replicate so that worked out quite nicely we managed to hide that away which is what the goal was just here so you can't actually tell now that the train track goes that far and luckily the trains that I was testing don't go right up and beyond the original bumpers anyway so that that's all good that worked out very nicely indeed so whilst we just detail this next section just a question for you guys what have you been up to this summer have you been going away anywhere nice have you um, gone somewhere and now you want to get into city skylines and try and build something like it let me know in the comment section below it's always nice to hear that and I always like to hear what you're building yourself so by all means do that if you want to speak to me more direct and sort of join the rest of the gang you can jump into our discord channel or you can get me on my twitter the link is uh, provided below um, and yeah i think in terms of where we're heading with this series we are making progress so like i say i have been doing a bit of recording prior to this video so when this video comes out um, i am working on the next one already um, and made quite a lot of progress to be fair um, and you'll also may have noticed as well, I've been doing some more collaboration with Paradox as well. I've done two, well, one has come out as you're watching this, the second one will be available as well. Um, talk about procedural objects, which is um, obviously a mod that you all know that I, I live by. <laughs> that and Move It are the two mods that really do allow me to build to the level and degree that I do build with. Um, certainly when we're working on very unusual aspects and I actually used a bit of the Isle of Wight project which you'll see in the next episode um, to sort of show off some of the possibilities with, with um, procedural objects so if you haven't already check out that on the official Paradox City Skylines channel you'll be able to see that on there and uh, see what I've been doing over the last few weeks um, but yeah over the summer time I literally didn't play the game at all um, I wanted to take a bit of a break, try and reframe myself and try and work out where to take the channel next and what to be building next. Monaco is obviously still a big project that um, needs, to have, it needs to have some time put into. Um, whilst I'm obviously active on this series, I'm concentrating more on this, I'll be honest, but Monaco is still there. Um, and I think I already know what we're going to be building next in the next episode of Monaco. So Monaco may end up being a monthly edition whereby perhaps I do a bit more of the um, building up of the housing areas because there's a lot of areas that need to be built that aren't going to be so exciting for people to look at um, and I still want to get to the finale. I don't want to finish things off and leave it unfinished because I have got a very big finale in mind for that. Um, so that's still still ongoing um, videos as I say it's always difficult especially this time of the year it's quite busy in terms of my work schedule and sort of just daily activities to really fulfill a weekly series episode out um, but I'm going to do my best um, I may try and get a backlog 
of videos ready and try and do it once every two weeks and then perhaps if I've got a, a strong backlog over, over the Christmas period we'll do more weekly then um, but that's where the channel's heading um, and I want to you know want to want to fulfill it and make sure that you guys are getting the most out of this channel because you know we were growing quite strong before the summer hit um, and I want to carry that on I want to sort of show you guys what I can build and sort of find out what you guys want me to build and see what you you know what input you have because that's the best part of the whole YouTube experience is showing off what I've built to try and influence other people and give them ideas but also for you to give me some influence and ideas and sort of see where I can take my next level of building so that's kind of where the channel is as of today so any thoughts comments or ideas of what you'd like to see on the series or the channel in general by all means get in touch and let me know in the comment section or via the social media and with that said, we are coming to the latter stages now of this episode. So we put down the cars and you notice that the spaces that are free, those are actually proper car parking spaces. So cars will park there, they're functional. Um, obviously the ones on the outskirts are the ones that we've basically um, faked in terms of there isn't actually any ground there. So we're using the props to float cars and make it look more realistic. Um, and I didn't want to fulfill the whole area with car parking and cars everywhere because it's not that much of a busy um, location for that so I think the way we did this worked out as realistic as we possibly could but with that said guys that's pretty much it for this episode hope you enjoyed it I hope you stick around for the cinematics and I'll catch you all again in the next one thanks for watching and all the best